Hello. Hello, to carry on. Yeah, okay. So, conclusion of this trial was uh, there were no significant effect of prophylactic surfactant nebulization in the delivery room on delta change of end expiratory lung impedance when compared with the standard care. Apart from a slightly increased end expiratory lung impedance in the intervention group at 6 and 12 hours after birth, mostly due to improved aeration in central lung areas, no further physiological benefits after prophylactic surfactant ne nebulization. There were no clinically important differences in the outcome between the groups co collecting electrical impedance tomography data and performing serpentine nebulization during delivery room stabilization were feasible. Different interfaces, nebulizer types, and most importantly, serpentine concentrations should be researched before implementation in future clinical studies. So what was uh, already uh, known to on this serpentine nebulization? Serpentine nebulization is a uh, promising non-invasive route of serpentine application in the preterm infants. And serpentine nebulization may be effective in preventing intubation in preterm infants with established respiratory distress syndrome, but the effect of prophylactic serpentine nebulization immediately after birth was unclear. And so what was this study added? Prophylactic serpentine nebulization did not improve aeration and ventilation homogeneity as well as clinical outcomes. Lung aeration was slightly increased after prophylactic serpentine nebulization at 6 and 12 hours after birth, particularly in the central areas of the lung. Performing serpentine nebulization as well as continuous lung volume monitoring using electrical impedance tomography was feasible in very preterm infants immediately after birth. So how this study might affect research? Propylectic uh, serpentine nebulization cannot be recommended for clinical practice at present. Different interfaces, nebulizer types, and serpentine concentrations should be researched in Bain's studies before implementation of serpentine nebulization in future clinical studies. Now critical uh, appraisal, critical appraisal skills program uh, checklists. Section A is the Basic study design valid for a randomized clinical trial. I am question one, did the trial address a clearly focused issue? Yes, the research question was well-defined, focused in terms of the population studied in the intervention given, the competitor given the outcomes uh, considered. Was the assignment of the patient to the intervention randomized? Yes, infants were randomized using a random allocation sequence in a one to one ratio where all the patients who entered the trial properly accounted for a co uh, conclusion here. Yeah. Section B, was the study methodologically sound? Uh, question four, were the patients, health workers, and study personnel blinded? Uh, parents and health workers blinded. However, uh, study personnel are not blinded. Were the groups similar at the uh, start of randomized control trial? Yes, baseline characteristics were comparable for those for the groups. Apart from experimental intervention, were the groups treated, treated equally? Yes, both groups treated equally other than the intervention. Section C, what are the results? Uh, were the effects of intervention reported comprehensively? Yes, outcomes were clearly defined and secondary outcomes pre-specified. Was the precision of the estimate of the intervention or treatment effect uh, mm -hmm. reported? Yes, confidence uh, interval given for all possible outcomes. Do the benefits of the experimental intervention outweigh the harms and costs? It needs further studies with larger sample size to comment on this question. Uh, section D, will the results help locally? Uh, can the results be applied to your local population in your context? Needs more confirmatory studies uh, before recommending this. Uh, would the experimental intervention provide greater value to the people in your care than any other existing interventions? Uh, cannot be commented at present. So there are uh, similar studies on uh, nebulized surfactant. Uh, uh, first one was uh, published in uh, Pediatrics in the year 2020, aerosolized calpactant for neonatal uh, respiratory distress syndrome. And uh, their results were uh, newborn with early mild to moderate respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, they found aeros aerosolized calpactant added dose of 210 milligram phospholipid per kg body weight uh, 
a reduced intubation and surfactant installation by nearly one hour. Uh, that is 50 to 50% 50 to 25% uh, mentioned in the uh, Goldsmith textbook. Nebulist versus invasively delivered surfactant in neonatal RDS. Uh, this was published in medicine uh, in the year 2020. Given the limited evidences, the effects of safety and uh, safety of nebulized versus invasively delivered uh, surfactant is still need further verification. Nebulized surfactant to reduce the severity of respiratory distress syndrome, a blinded parallel RCT published in the same journal, the British Medical Journal in the year 2020. And results were early postnatal nebulized surfactant may reduce the need for intubation in the first three days of life compared with the nasal CPAP alone in infants born 29 to 33 weeks, uh, gestationalists with mild respiratory distress syndrome, and the recommend confirmation requires further adequately power studies. Next study was uh, aerosolized surfactant for preterm infants with RDS, published in the journal Children in the year 2021, and their uh, results were if an ideal surfactant aerosol can be advanced with non invasive means of ventilatory support and established efficacy and safety for newborn premature infants, a major therapeutic step forward can be achieved in the near future. And in a study, surfactant nebulization to prevent intubation in preterm infants, a systematic review and meta analysis, also published in Pediatrics in 2021. And they concluded that surfactant nebulization reduced the intubation rate in preterm infants with a higher efficacy for a specific subgroups. No difference in relevant to neonatal morbidities or mortality. Next study was uh, a randomized controlled trial to investigate the efficacy of nebulized poractant alpha in preterm infants with RDS, published in the Journal of Pediatrics in the year 2022. And their conclusion was the intervention did not decrease the likelihood of respiratory failure within first 72 hours of life. The next study was surfactant replacement therapy. What's the new future? Published in the Journal of Neonatology in the year 2022. Uh, and they mentioned that adaptation of aerosolized surfactant in the routine practice is pending and needs more supportive evidence. And also surfactant replacement therapy along with other drugs like budesonide and others is a field that uh, needs deeper exploration. There is also a study ongoing in the UK with surfactant nebulization with uh, budesonide. Uh, next study, aerosol, aerosol delivery of lung surfactant and nasal CPAP in the surfactant uh, treatment of neonatal RDS published in the pediatrics pulmonology in the year 2022 and they concluded ongoing research on nebulizer technology and this nasal interface should focus on the optimization of delivery route and lung doses of highly active surfactant synthetic formulations so though they stress there on the uh, interface and machinery and also nebulizer and the last study was the trial of aerosolized surfactant for preterm infants with respiratory distress syndrome using the new machine Aerofact CPAP nebulizer system published in the same journal, British Medical Journal in the year 2022. The Aerofact system can safely deliver aerosolized surfactant to preterm infants with RDS who are on NCPAP. But in this trial, they use uh, double the doses uh, required uh, for the uh, clinical response for surfactant. Uh, there was only one uh, Cochrane review in this. Uh, nebulized uh, surfactant preterm infants with a with or at risk respiratory distress syndrome. And uh, they concluded that the studies take a, uh, they con uh, taken a studies up to 2011 only. And they concluded that needs further confirmatory studies before recommending surfactant re replacement therapy by nebulization. So thank you. Thank you, Rashadur. I think we have seen the evolution of surfactant administration therapy. Initially, surfactant was administered through endotracheal tube. After that, concept of insure came 
then recently we have seen uh, lisa less infectious surfactant administration and now there are some research on nebulizer surfactant nebulization yes although most of the studies as ashadur has highlighted has been done on nicu but this is the first study has been conducted in the delivery room one of the important thing that what we have seen in this particular trial is that they were trying to measure the functional residual capacity capacity but in, uh, but in clinical in clinical practice it is not very easy to measure functional residual, uh, residual capacity that's why they were doing impedance by tomography and that is basically a research tool yes. um, but clinically um, uh, clinically how to say that there is frc it, by seeing the compliance and also saturation that is the clinical tool that is we have yeah, yes. but this is the first study they were trying to see impedance um, uh, tomography and that way that it is said that it highly correlates with the functional residual capacity capacity so and uh, although the sample size was very small and it did not find a statistical significance um, but uh, this is the beginning of a new kind of administration therapy yes uh, but it needs further studies second important thing is that although we say that lisa is less invasive or non invasive but it is not totally non invasive we have to put to a laryngoscopy and put a catheter and baby has to breathe through the catheter but if this nebulizer salvetamol becomes a standard of care then it will be more user friendly than lisa or mist so i think we can wait for some questions although the participants are very less those who are there if you may be interested you can please ask some questions if we have got in your mind any questions or any question queries um, but one some of the few things we need to actually know yes whatever surfactant you administer through aerosol through nebulization as all of us know only 10 to 15% of the drug actually reaches the lung yes sir uh, uh, and we don't know how much uh, actually that they have also said in their limitation you are giving 200 mg per kg but how much it is it has reached the lung that is not actually that could not be measured yes sir. so whether it will be it will have a meaningful clinical outcome that is not sure uh, and so that is no method uh, actually to measure how much surfactant reaching in the alveoli uh, uh, because uh, as we know that if it is if you, either you give by lisa or insure or by through endotracheal tube whatever surfactant you give more, most of the surfactant will be distributed evenly throughout the lungs but through nebulizer how much it is deposited in the oropharynx and how much it is going to the alveoli and that is not known that is one of the biggest man as challenge in future because we are giving 200 mg out of 20 10% is only 20 mg per kg will reach the lung and second important thing the volume here they have used curosab i think so curosab curosab and the volume of curosab is less so out of this less amount of curosab how much that is this it has reached the alveoli that is not also clear and final and they have also said about the concentration of that surfactant and the size of the particle Uh, they have used mesh vibrator yeah. uh, but in our normal clinical practice we do not use mesh vibrator so these are the certain challenges um, but what we feel but if the first of all there are many things we have to keep in mind one is that how much the dose should be administered that is not clear mm -hmm. what should be the size of the particle that is not clear then how much the goes inside the alveoli that is not clear not clear then type of nebulizer to use mm. here they have used only uh, they wanted to measure the frc because this study was conducted in the delivery room delivery room but if it is conducted in the nicu we need some then other outcome and that should be adequately powered That's because true. as we know that frc should be established in the delivery room that is the reason perhaps they were trying to see the frc at the delivery room that was their primary outcome but when you the baby is brought to the SA, nicu or snsu then we need to see other outcome like treatment failure or other outcome or the other complications like gigging regurgitation etc so these are the some, some that issues but that we need to find it out 
uh, actually uh, some of the important things uh, when we administer surfactant what is the main constituent of surfactant what is which is responsible for Phosph uh, reduce phospholipid phospholipid and what is the function what is the function of the protein protein it uh, helps in adsorb adsorb of the uh, adsorption actually hmm. actually protein does not directly help for reduction of surface tension surface. it is the actually phospholipid content that is responsible yes so and most of the studies till today what we have seen these are done in NICU or SNCU and mostly with 200 milligram or in the paractin 100 milligram per kg body weight. Mm -hmm. But what should be the dose of surfactant in the delivery room? Yeah, because here the main aim was to establish FRC at the delivery room. Yes. So how much it could be that this is not clear. That we that uh, further research will tell us. But one important thing, they have done a lot of hard work in the methodology. Hmm. Because they were trying to them and say, see, they are putting a, a flow sensor even with this uh, TP research editor. And with this flow sensor, they are measuring the flow, everything. Yes. So they need a separate machine for this research editor hmm. with this flow sensor. They were, they also had to um, uh, develop this uh, um, uh, device for electrical impedance tomography so that it corroborate well with the okay, FRC. So what they say, and we also feel that before going to human trial or clinical trial, the more brain studies should be needed before mm -hmm. it putting into clinical practice. Because brain studies will say actually this deposition, everything. Yes. Because in human trial, we cannot see all these things. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? It is unfortunately there are so little participation. Uh, and so that is why one thing you should keep in mind when these manufacturers are coming that my surfactant uh, preparation has got more uh, protein content, it is of no use. Protein does not make much difference. It is the phospholipid that makes the difference. Yes. Phospholipid amount is the same. Protein purpose is the absorption of the spreading of the surfactant. Yes. And spreading of the surfactant does not depend on the only by your uh, protein because before the baby takes the first breath the prophylactic surfactant the many people they use the terminology before that baby takes the first breath you give the surfactant but that is not very easy to administer in the even in the delivery room another important thing is that whether it will be applicable for the nicu or not because delivery room cpap or delivery room surfactant uh, nowadays it is not advisable most of the randomized clinical trial have said that uh, whether you give delivery room surfactant or not, it is of no use. Maybe the babies who are born less than 26 weeks, which was not done here, it, it may be of use for those babies who are born less than 26 weeks. But in our clinical settings, we hardly see, we, we do not see many babies or less than 26 weeks. So whether for our setting, whether it will be applicable or not, it is not clear because we do not give prophylactic surfactant and we are usually we usually handle the babies who are 28 to 34 weeks of gestation. So this may be a good study for the Western countries, Western countries. but for our country it may not be very what to say uh, uh, um, a, um, at this moment mass needed study at this mass needed study at this moment. Mm -hmm. We can see at the NICU, not in the delivery room. Any question from the participants? So if there is no questions and comments, I think, thank you, Asadur. Okay, so thank you, sir. Uh, uh, but these are the three things we should keep in mind when we are going thinking for another trial on surfactant administration therapy. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Hmm.